So, um, as Elizabeth said, I am doing a video for the upcoming series on chromatophores and squid skin. But today I'm going to talk to you about um, the research that I do in my lab. Um, and I study bird song. Um, so, here's one of the birds, that, the species that I study. Why, why do we study birds? Birds are a model of learning. So, songbirds learn their song from their father, in this case. In this species, only the male birds sing. And so, as a young bird, he listens to his father's song and memorizes exactly what it sounds like. And then when he grows up, he sings a precise copy of his father's song. And the reason he does that is because that is a way of attracting female birds. It's sort of like the peacock feather with um, having a really, really elaborate, beautiful thing as a way of attracting um, a mate. So it's a great behavior to study because it's a way that animals learn. So how, how does this happen when the bird is born, we, me we measure it in days post-hatch because they hatch from eggs, and the bird listens to his tutor, that's a sensory motor learning, and this is what a tutor bird sounds like for a zebra finch. You can sort of hear the repeated structure in the song, so I'll play it one more time. So that's what the baby bird wants to sound like. But when it's a baby, this is what he sounds like. It's very different. So he, he still has a lot of practice to do. So he practices. When he's a little bit older, it sounds slightly better. He's sort of getting there. And then when he's an adult, this is what his, sound, his song sounds like. And if you remember, I'm going to play them both one after the other. They sound very similar. <laughs> They've done a good job. Okay. So, what my lab is interested in is how, how do birds do that? How do they form this precise copy of their father's song? How do they learn? So, what do you do when you learn? How do you, what do you need to do to learn? Yeah, practice. And birds definitely do a lot of practice. Um, and anything else? What, what's important when you're learning? Listen. Yeah, you need to listen to yourself. You need to try a lot of different things. Sorry. Yeah, you, you listen for the right pattern. Um, so the two things that I'm going to focus on today, the uh, aspects of learning, is that you need to try a lot of things, so that's involved in practice, and then you need to remember what things were good, so you can do the, the things that were good. Um, and in birds, we uh, work from my lab has um, discovered which brain circuits are involved in um, these two aspects of learning. So I'll start with remembering how to do the good song. So um, there's a this pathway that we call the descending motor pathway, and this pathway controls the precise timing of the bird's song, and it stores his best copy of what he's singing. And neurons in this, um, can't see this very well, but neurons uh, in this region, if you record them when he's singing, they, they acquire at precise moments of the song in a sequence. So it's like a chain of neurons saying, first do this, then do that, then do that, and that produces his song. Um, and so here is a what's called a spectrogram of the bird song. It's a diagram where this is time, and this is what pitches he's singing. You can see it's very precise. I'm going to play it for you. So, so he needs to learn precisely this, and that descending motor pathway has stored um, this precise timing of the song. 
And one way of, think, of confirming that this is the region that stores the precise timing of the song is that you can actually cool this brain region when he tries to sing. And what cooling does is it slows down the song. And so you slow down the region that's determining the timing of the song, and the song gets slower. So again, this is work from um, Michael Fee's love work, and um, this was his original song, and his song was slow, and you can see time is just stretched out, and now the bird is singing a much slower song. So anyway, that, that is the region of the brain that controls what his best song is, remembers what he should do. The other important thing to do is to try new things. So it turns out there's a circuit in the brain called the interior forebrain pathway, which inserts random new things to try into his song. So when he's a baby, this is all that's happening. You heard that random song, that's all that's happening. But even when he's adult, an adult, when he's practicing, he tries different variations and gets different results. Now, when, when would we not want to be trying new things? Sorry? He has a good enough match. Yeah, if he has a good enough match, he should stop trying um, new things. That, 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 that's a good point. When, even if he's not quite matched, is there any time when he should not try new things? When he's trying to attract a ladybird. Exactly. So here, I have a video of that. And the bird actually shuts down this pathway for trying new things when he's trying to attract a female bird. So in this video, let me play it again for you, but in this video you can tell the male bird because he has these orange patches on his cheeks and then there's a female bird that doesn't have the orange patches, she's gray, um, and he's singing to her.
That's a good question. The question was, how do females determine the best song, and how do they learn that? And we don't really know. Actually, in the lab, when we want to see if a song is good, um, pe people will actually sort of ask the female bird. They'll see which song the female bird prefers. <laughs> so they know better than we do. So what does the female bird prefer? Sorry? We think it's something to do with maybe the complexity of the song, um, if it has a lot of syllables, um, but, and, and also if it's very stereotyped, if it's the same every time, but it's hard to tell. Yeah, the question is, do you study this to, for song connection to human behavior? And it's, the process of song learning is very similar to speech learning in people. And so that is, that is one key connection. And also one brain region, the basal ganglia, that's very involved in song learning is involved in any sort of motor learning in people. Um, and so it's what's messed up in diseases like Huntington's and Parkinson's disease. Um, so it's sort of a model of specifically speech learning, but also learning in general. Any motor task, like if you're learning to play an instrument or do an athletic task or anything like that. I think your, your question is how much does the song change if the bird's going through evolution? That's a good question. And um, these, the songs of these birds actually, um, they, the songs themselves change faster than evolution. So there might be the same species of bird, but if some of the birds are living in one place and not listening to birds in the other place, then each each um, group of birds will develop a slightly different song because they, there's no crosstalk. It's sort of like different languages in different countries. Any other questions?